Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Bitcoin. All right, so a lot has happened with Bitcoin over the last few weeks, but also not a lot has happened. Really, we had this mini correction all the way down to about 56K, and now we're just right back up around all-time highs again. We tried to break up above once, failed. We're up maybe trying to do that again. So then the question that everyone is asking is, what are the conditions right now? Do the conditions favor a breakout to new all-time highs from here for Bitcoin or not so much? So I want to talk about some broader market factors and also what some of our models are seeing that can help us answer that question. So first off, we're talking about broader markets. One of the things that's notable is that the stock market has, again, made new all-time highs. We see that already happening here. I mean, it made new all-time highs of this push up and it did so again just today as I record this on the 6th of June. Now, what's notable about that is that a bullish stock market tends to be bullish for crypto and for Bitcoin. And more recently, what we can see is if I just overlay the Bitcoin price here, just zoom out a little bit, you can see that when the stock market last broke above its prior all-time high, that was back here in January of 2024. So the stock market broke above, set new all-time highs. And then shortly after, Bitcoin followed suit and set new all-time highs itself. So that is one thing that I'm going to be looking out for is could that happen again? We're already seeing bullish movements in the stock market. Could that be a signal that conditions are favorable for risk assets or at least favorable enough that maybe Bitcoin can finally break above this resistance that is formed in this general 70 to about 74K range and set in a new all-time high. Now, it's not just the S&P 500 that has been looking good. We also can look at the NASDAQ, which also put in new all-time highs up here. Well, technically it closed below, but it put a new all-time high in within the day. The only major index that's not at a new all-time high in the stock market is the Dow Jones. And the other thing we can look at that's also notable is that the DXY, which is basically the strength of the US dollar relative to a basket of other fiat currencies, is falling off here. Now, it's not falling off a cliff, and I really like to see this correct more. But the reason why I'm watching the DXY is it tends to be inversely correlated to Bitcoin and other crypto assets. So when the DXY is doing well, crypto tends to do poorly. When the DXY does poorly, crypto tends to do well. So what we can see is that the DXY is looking like it might be kind of breaking down out of this uptrend, this local uptrend that it formed. And if that continues, I think that would just be more tailwinds for risk assets like Bitcoin that could send it higher. So those are some broader market conditions that I'm watching that tell us, I think, a bullish story, at least for right now. If we see the stock market reverse, obviously, and collapse down, that would change the signs. But right now, setting new all-time highs is, by definition, a bullish thing. It's hard to agree to any other way. So the stock market so far is looking bullish, at least two of the three major indices. But now I want to flip over to some of our models that we have here at the channel and see what they are saying about Bitcoin and its current price action. So the first model I want to talk about here is the short-term risk for Bitcoin. So the short-term UDPI. So higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And you see this does a really good job of tracking these points of really high risk for Bitcoin and also these really low risk points for Bitcoin throughout its history. Now, more recently, just to zoom in a little bit here, we had gotten pretty extended on the short-term UDPI for Bitcoin when we went and put in the, the current all-time high for Bitcoin back here in March. So the short-term UDPI got all the way up to 2.25, which is pretty extended. You don't get to those levels very often. It's pretty rare. And at the time, I was saying that Bitcoin could be due for a correction to let risk cool off, and that's exactly what we saw. But then after risk did reset notably, we then started moving up and short-term risk did move back up as well. And currently it sits just below neutral. So right around neutral, meaning that in the short term, the model sees equal plausible upside and downside potential. So a bit of a no man's land, but certainly if Bitcoin wanted to break out to new all-time highs right now, it could do it. It has plenty of room to work with to the upside. It's just that that upside might be a bit more limited than if we were starting at levels such as, you know, all the way down here or down here or down here. But certainly not a inhibiting factor in my view. Now, the other model we can look at to get a sense of 
what is the direction of Bitcoin or what is the trend, the trend confidence indicator or TCI? So I've talked about this model before. The way that I like to look at it is how is the TCI moving in relation to price? So for example, you see the TCI move up aggressively, then price will often follow. And then if you see the TCI start moving down aggressively, then that uptrend is likely stalling out and you'll often see a correction. And it kind of goes in these waves during, especially these bull market phases, the way that you can kind of look at it is when the TCI starts moving up, that's a good sign. Price will often move up as well. Moving down is often a correction. But then in a bull market, those corrections just tend to be opportunities. And again, the same thing happened here. We had the TCI move up aggressively, new all-time high, move down aggressively into the correction, then started moving up aggressively to really signal that a new uptrend might be forming. And that's still where we're at right now. The TCI is still moving up notably. So as long as that continues, I think the dominant direction will probably remain up. And we just saw with the short-term UPI that there is more room to the upside to work with. So unless things radically change, I still think that it's a reasonable outlook for to be bullish for Bitcoin. And that might not mean that it has to break out to new all-time highs immediately, but would not shock me at all if in the not too distant future, we will see Bitcoin set new all-time highs. Then it'll be a matter of how much further it can rally in that breakout. But certainly some new all-time high would not surprise me at all in the relatively near future. We're just seeing in the short term the conditions being conducive to that possibility. So that's short term. Let's now zoom out to the longer term and think about where is Bitcoin in its market cycle and where might we be going next from that perspective. So the model I want to talk about here first is the momentum bias indicator or MBI. So I talked about this model a lot in the past. It's a momentum indicator. So positive values basically mean that positive momentum is winning the day. Basically, momentum is biased to the upside, whereas negative values mean that momentum is biased to the downside. And you'll notice distinct patterns of behavior on this model at different phases of the market cycle. So in the bull market, you're spending a lot of time in the green, not very much time in the red. In bear markets, it's the exact opposite. A lot of time in the red, not a lot of time in the green. But then there are these interesting transitionary periods where you go out of the bear market into the bull market, which tend to be characterized by this kind of oscillation around zero, zero being kind of whatever the average momentum is in the market. That's what this is. This is the Z score is what this model is outputting. So zero is actually the average amount of momentum that's in the market. And so actually with Bitcoin being at around zero is actually a good thing because Bitcoin has overall had positive momentum throughout its life. So if you can just kind of oscillate around zero, that tends to be a good thing. That momentum is kind of going towards that overall positive view and ultimately then will lead into these or ramp up into these periods of massive explosions in positive momentum that really dominate and persist until you have some kind of big blow off top type situation. So more recently, what we can notice here is that really kind of on the dot, right as we went into the bottom of the bear market, we started going into that transitionary behavior in the MBI, kind of this transition out of the bear market into the new bull market. And really that's the behavior that we've kept this entire time, this kind of equal oscillation around zero. We then in this correction dip back below zero, we're now back above it and very easily could start moving up further. If we did get that short-term breakout to new all-time highs that we were just talking about, that would very much be in line with the possibility of just going up, putting another peak to the upside before maybe coming back down. And really what we're looking for with this model is when do we get to that point where maybe we start getting this really euphoric part where there's just so much positive momentum that it can't really sustain forever and lose that blow off top. I don't think we're there yet, but that's what I'd be looking for. That if we did get that breakout to new all-time high, how does this model start looking? Do we get to these really extreme levels that tend to mark extreme points where the market really is ultimately either tapped out completely or close to it, that will then lead into a shift and a bear market. So that's what I'm gonna be watching. So far, so good is what I'm seeing here, that this is still a sign of kind of transition and probably early bull market, early to mid bull market behavior on the MBI right now. But then if we go into a phase like this or like this or like this, for example, that might be a sign that we're getting into later phases of the market cycle where we're getting too euphoric and then the bottom is going to fall out at some point. So that's what I'm seeing right now with the MBI. Another model we can look at that gives similar picture to the market is our forecast model. So this is a model that outputs the probability that the price of Bitcoin will be above where it is right now six months in the future. 
And so basically it's a probability. So 0.97 would be a 97% chance of the price of Bitcoin is above where it is right now, six months in the future. Whereas for example, 0.05 would be a 5% chance that it's up. And see this model does a really good job of tracking these broader cycles, these kind of bullish phases, these bearish phases, bullish phases, bearish, bullish, bearish, et cetera. Now to zoom in more recently, what you'll notice is that we have been bullish this entire time, really from the bottom of the bear market and then through all the way to all-time highs, just very bullish on the forecast model. Now, interestingly, you'll notice that it did have a pretty notable dip here, and now it's kind of rebounded and it's currently bullish, currently at 66% chance of upside in six months, but not extremely bullish. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the bear market's coming, we should be panicking? Well, no, first of all, the model is still bullish. It's not even bearish at all. So it wouldn't make sense to be saying that a bear market's right around the corner from that perspective. But also we just zoom out and look at past cycles. What you'll notice is that when you're getting into those kind of later stages, mid to later stages of the bull market, you'll see the model do this, where it will kind of come down and start being a little bit less confident in the current situation. And that's totally normal. And really what it's just a sign of, in my view, is that we're no longer in the early stages of the bull market. And that shouldn't surprise anyone. We've already set new all-time highs. That's never been for Bitcoin a sign that you're in early bull market situation. Early bull markets are always below the prior all-time high by definition. So the fact that we're already up there is just a sign that we're already at that mid phase. And that's what we're seeing here. Really with this model, I'm not gonna get super concerned until I see it decisively drop below 50% and really stay down there for a while. That would be more of a bearish sign, more of bear market behavior, where something is gonna happen before too terribly long, so negative price action is probably gonna start taking over. We're not there yet. So I think Bitcoin could easily continue to rally notably further, even with the forecast model not being hyper bullish. I mean, it's done that plenty of times in the past, very well can happen again in my view. And so that's really what I'm seeing from these broader models that we're looking at here, is that they're telling us the bull market's already been happening for a while. And the nice thing about these models is that they were doing so in real time. And that, this is one of the reasons why I was so bullish all of 2023, because it was very clear from the data that we were in the early phases of a new bull market. And that's really the time you wanna be most bullish. But now they're going into this phase, I don't think it's necessarily the case not to be bullish. Certainly the model still leans on that side, but the best opportunities are behind us. And that's why it really pays to be paying attention to the market when no one wants to pay attention during bear markets, because that is when the best opportunities present themselves if you just follow the data or just look at what the data are doing. So obviously none of this is financial advice. You should make your own opinion about these data and what we are talking about here. But this is what I'm seeing is that we're in that kind of mid phase of the bull market right now is my base case. And of course that could change. If the data changed notably, I will change my outlook. That's part of having a data-driven outlook. Don't let your biases and emotion drive it. Let the data drive it. That's the way that I like to approach these markets. So certainly I will change my view if the data change. But for now, I still am comfortably bullish. Though of course, recognizing again, that the best opportunities are already well behind us. And that for Bitcoin now, we're just kind of waiting for whatever that last hurrah might be and wherever, assuming we are going to stay in a bull market and set new all-time highs, where that peak will ultimately end up being. And that's where I'm going to do things like watching our risk models, watching our trend models, watching our momentum models to get a better idea of when that might be happening. Because when we get to that all-time high or that next market cycle peak, you better believe that no one's going to be saying it's the peak at that time, or very few people will. But I think that the data will probably give us a pretty good idea. And that's what I intend to follow. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X, a lot of updates on our models and more over there. You can go to our website, partydigital.io to see live data for our models and more.